Let me formally welcome everyone again and say happy new month. Welcome to the month of November and welcome to the Surefire live conference platform. Today we want to complete our teaching on the blessing sets. And so we're going to take the blessing set number five. We have taken the blessing set number one, two, three, four. Today we want to take the blessing set number five. For the sake of those who may just be joining us for the first time, uh, we started by saying that there are guaranteed blessings for all those who are in Christ Jesus. And these guaranteed blessings is what we call, we title the blessing set of the birth, the death, the resurrection and ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And so we look at number one being the blessing of forgiveness of sins and deliverance from the power and nature of sin. Number two, the blessing of deliverance from the power of darkness and dominion. God has given us dominion over Satan, all his agents, and all his works and his activities. Number three, the blessing of the Holy Spirit with his gift, which we call the power of God and his fruit, which we call the fruit of the Spirit or the righteousness of God. And then we look at number four, rather, the blessing of healing, that by the stripes of Jesus you were healed. I am healed. We are healed. It is our right to remain healthy all the days of our lives till the day we close our eyes in death, not to live in pain and sickness. The Bible says that Moses lived 120 years and his strength did not abate. His eyes did not grow dim. That shall be our portion forever in the name of Jesus. And number five, which is what we're going to look at today, we are looking at the blessing of sonship, the blessing of sonship. You and I have become sons and daughters of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. From all that we have studied already and from the book that God helped me to write, which I shared with you, who is a Christian, if um, sons and daughters of God. So I'm just going to touch on a few scriptures and how we become sons and daughters of God. So I'm just going to touch on a few scriptures and then we go into the practical because this is not a teaching that is theory. This is a teaching meant for us to live. Remember the Surefire Life Conference platform is a platform with the sole aim of making simple the pathway to eternal life. It is about helping both Christians and non-Christians, bringing everyone who ever hears this message to the truth that God has already provided and the blessing of God to be able to live a successful life here on earth and continue into that eternal life that God has provided for us. Praise the name of the Lord. So let us start quickly by looking at, more like I will call it a revision of this topic, sonship. Hallelujah. Our objective is to give understanding of what it means to be a son or a daughter of God. and. Secondly, awaken us to the consciousness of our duties as sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, maybe I should say it right away here that there are no complications and no argument about what it means to be a son or a daughter of God. It is only by the Holy Spirit period. And so nobody is born naturally a son or a daughter of God. 
God already created all of us. So if by reason of that, one wants to claim that he's a son, he is a daughter of God, oh well. However, the Bible makes us to understand that the whole world lies in sin. And a holy God cannot condone, behold, live, dwell in sin or with that sin. So God has condemned the world. And therefore, God has made a way to bring sons and daughters unto himself through Jesus Christ our Lord. So it is only by the Holy Spirit, only those who have been regenerated through the Spirit of God that are sons and daughters of God. So look with me very quickly in John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. The Bible says, but as many as received him, that is Jesus Christ, he's talking about here. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Can you see that? It is not because you were born of the flesh. God created all of us. God created all things. By the way, know that God created the devil as well. So if you want to use the fact that God created you, created me, created all humankind to claim that God is your father, go ahead and claim. But God makes it clear that he created the devil as well, and yet the devil has been cast down. As we saw in our earlier studies, God has cast the devil out of his presence. And so is everyone who is subject to the rulership of the devil, which we taught before. It is only by the Spirit of God that we become sons and daughters of God, and we become subject to the rulership of God. We will become part and parcel of the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the Bible makes it abundantly clear here that it is only those who receive him, Jesus, that receive the right, the right, the right, to become children of God. And these people are not those who were born, it's not by the natural birth of flesh and blood, but they are people who are born of God, born by the Spirit of God. To further portray this, you know the popular Bible portion in John chapter 3 about a man called Nicodemus. Let's look at that very quickly so this brings it clear. He said, there was a man of Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. I'm reading from uh, John chapter 3, verse 1. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. No one can do these signs that you do except God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Moses, shortly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This is one word that has been used and bastardized and abused, so much so that people don't want to use it anymore. But whether we accept to use it or not, the truth of God remains sure and certain. It is clear that there is a new birth that a man receives a human being received to become a child of God, to become a son or a daughter of God. That new birth is by the Holy Spirit. So hear what Nicodemus asked him in verse 4. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Five, Jesus answered, Moses, surely I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God, except one is born of water and the spirit. Water here represents baptism and the spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, enter the kingdom of God. So you can take the two verses here, key verse, verse three, it says, except a man be born again, he cannot see. See, he cannot come to the understanding, the revelation of the things of God, the kingdom of God. 
that's being born again. And then he went further and said, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Look at verse 6. It says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Because of time, let's go further and see what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You remember, we have talked about this in uh, John chapter 14, uh, talking about the spirit of God. Jesus promised us, if we look at verse 15 and 16 and 17, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So we're talking about sonship, that it is by the spirit of God. If we look at uh, Romans chapter 8, Verses 15 and 17, and then verse 29. We'll see this truth also. Uh, Romans chapter 8 is very rich. So verses 15, 16, and 17. I'll read all that so we would, because we're going to take some points from that. Verse 15 says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. Uh, Abba there also means father, so you can say Abba father means my father, my father. It also means God is my father, Abba father. Verse 16, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So it is only by the spirit of God that we become sons and daughters of God. Verse 17, and if children then heirs, heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So when you become a son of God, a daughter of God, you become an heir of God. Hallelujah. And we already covered uh, in the teaching of the Holy Spirit. So here we're just again touching and emphasizing that if you have come to Jesus Christ, and you have received the Holy Spirit, you should know that you are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. Hallelujah. Our key question is, what do you do with this sonship and with this daughterhood that you have received? Uh, quickly, I still want to read uh, Romans chapter 8 first before I go further. Romans chapter 8. Let's also read verse 29 to see the emphasis there that we have been made in the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. It says, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he, the son of God, might be the firstborn among many brethren. You are a brother, a sister of Jesus Christ. And of course, you remember the, when Jesus was here on earth, he affirmed that when they came to him and said, your mother and your brethren, they are looking for you. He said, who is my mother, who is my brethren? These ones that, that are with me, these ones that do the will of God. So Jesus affirmed that. And the scripture here in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, makes it abundantly clear that God has made us, predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son the image of Jesus Christ, that he, Jesus Christ, might be the firstborn. So he is the firstborn amongst many brethren. We are like him. We have been made like him by the Holy Spirit. Of course, you know, Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Holy Spirit. And he operated all through by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. There are so many scriptures that have confirmed this truth of our sonship. 
Let's quickly look at Galatians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. He says, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son. Look at that. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son. His son, Jesus Christ. So there is one who is called the son of God. That is Jesus Christ. He is the only begotten of the father, the son of God, who proceeded from God. And through him, God Almighty has raised to himself many sons and daughters, the children of God. So there is the son of God, and there are sons and daughters of God, small s and small d. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So make bold to say, I am a son of God. Please say that to yourself now. I am a son of God. For the sister, say to yourself, I am a daughter of God. Hallelujah. If you have received Jesus and you have received the Holy Spirit of God. So we continue reading that Galatians chapter 4, verses 6 and uh, 7. I have read verse 6, uh, but I just repeat that verse 6. He said, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. The same word we heard before, Abba, Father, God is my Father. Can you make bold to say that right now? Wherever you are, say it, God is my Father. God is your Father. Verse 7, therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son and a daughter. And if a son and a daughter of God, then an heir of God through Christ. Through Jesus Christ, we are sons and daughters of God. And therefore, we are heirs of God. I will look at the last scripture and then we just make some points. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. Hebrews 2, verse 10. Let's look at that. Hebrews 2, verse 10. Hallelujah. For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For it was fitting for him. This is God now. It was fitting for God. For whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory, in bringing you and me into the image of his son, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, to make the captain of our salvation, that is Jesus Christ himself, perfect through sufferings. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Through suffering, Jesus Christ has become perfect and has made us sons and daughters of God. Through him, we have access to the spirit of God and we have received the spirit grace. As the scripture says there in Galatians chapter 4, verse 6 and the uh, Romans chapter 8, verse, verses 15 and 16, that we are sons of God. And we cry by the Spirit, Abba, Father. As we started to receive the Holy Spirit, when you have come into Jesus Christ, you ask God to give you the Holy Spirit and you believe him by faith because he is faithful. He has said, whoever asks through his son, Jesus Christ, he will give the spirit. Now, we have become sons and daughters of God. This is not for plea. This is not for assumptions. So this is the key. This is the crux. This is where we are going to. What do we then do? Having known that we have received the spirit of God and we are sons and daughters of God. Beloved brothers and sisters, in that same Romans chapter 8, 
The Bible says that the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Because the sons of God refuse to manifest, that is why things are the way they are. So we have been called into sonship for a purpose. So we want to make some very categorical points. So number one point that we should note is this, that you and I, as sons and daughters of God, have right and authority to do the work of Jesus Christ, the work of Jesus Christ. And you see this in John chapter 14, verse 12. There Jesus Christ said, the works that I do, you shall do. Even greater works than this. He said, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than this, he will do. Because I go to my father. So we are to continue to do the works of Jesus Christ. And this works of Jesus Christ is the will of God. Hallelujah. And you quickly see in Matthew chapter 10 what these works are. Verses 10 and then uh, 7 and 8. Verse 10 says, And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Jump with me to verse 7. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So as a son, as a daughter of God, you have been given the right, the authority to do the works of Jesus Christ, to continue to do those works that Jesus did when he was here on earth, and he's continuing to do them through you and me. He wants us to make ourselves available to do this work. Point number two, you have to be conscious of the fact that you are no longer an ordinary person. You are a son, you are a daughter of God. This is the crux of the matter, brothers and sisters. This is the key. I can spend the whole time here because if you get this, then you will experience a difference in your life. You must become conscious of the fact that you are no longer an ordinary person. You are no longer just flesh and blood. You have been recreated. Something has happened to you if you have come to Jesus Christ and have asked for the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, many of us are unconscious of this fact. And so we behave as ordinary men. I challenge you this morning, brothers and sisters, you are not ordinary man. You are not ordinary woman. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. Look at what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. I believe many of us can quote that scripture offhand. He said, if any, anyone, anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation, new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You have become a new person. If you don't know this, you will continue to behave as ordinary person. But I tell you, you are not an ordinary person. Something happened in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. Because of time, we'll not be able to read. When Saul the king was anointed. The Bible says the spirit of God came upon him. Why not? Let's read it. Let's read it. It's very important. First Samuel chapter 10 verse 6. The spirit of God came upon him and he became another man. Read it with me. He said, then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you 
and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. You are not an ordinary person, brothers and sisters. You have the Holy Ghost. You have been recreated by the Spirit of God. There is nothing and nobody, no person like a Christian in the whole creation of God. A Christian is a unique person. He's the only person that is recreated after had been born the first time by the Spirit of God. Unfortunately, many are not conscious of this fact and we are behaving as ordinary men. Ordinary human beings. You are not ordinary. So you saw there. That was even in the olden days. Where the Holy Spirit only come to visit men and depart. After Saul, the king was anointed. Samuel told him. He said, the Spirit of God will come upon you. And you will, you will be turned into another man. The same thing happened when David was anointed. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, David was anointed. After he was anointed, things changed. And then in 1 Samuel chapter 17, remember, I'm talking about consciousness. This is the crux of the matter. This is the key and this is the code that you must unlock to begin to do the work of God that God has sent you to this world to do. So in 1 Samuel chapter 17, you remember, Goliath, the champion of the Philistines, came against Israel, threatened Israel for 40 days and 40 nights. Even King Saul, that received the spirit of God and was turned into another man, became paralyzed. Fear gripped him. The whole army of Israel forgot that they carried God in their midst because they still had the ark of God. But David appeared in the sin. Talking about a man who is conscious of what he is carrying. You carry the Holy Ghost. And by that spirit you have been regenerated, recreated. You are a new creation. You are a son and daughter of the Most High God. David showed up. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is defiling the most high God, the God of, the, of, of Israel and the army of Israel. They said, David, leave that man. He's a giant. He is a trained warrior and all that. But David knew what he carried. He said, I will go and destroy this Philistine and stop this uh, defilement. And David did. And so, brothers and sisters, if you're conscious of your right and your authority and who you are as a son and daughter of God, then you will do the work of God. So it takes action. I often challenge people and say, God will do nothing if you don't do something. So start doing something like David. Hallelujah. Imagine David there went against Goliath with five stones and a sling. A man was carrying a sword and spear and, and shield and armor. And David went with five stones and a sling. He had to do something. And in that little thing he did, the Almighty God showed forth and Goliath was defeated and destroyed, just like David said he would do. The Almighty God, by his spirit, will move you now to do something. So I mentioned the other points quickly, and then we will round off there. So you are in the image of Christ. Never you forget that. And so point number three, you are an overcomer. Because you are in the image of Christ, you are an overcomer. You see this in Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. Because of time, we'll not be able to go there. Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. 1 John chapter 3, 12 to 14. 1 John chapter 3, 12 to 14. Number four, you are more than a conqueror. 
You see this in Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Number five, you are a partaker of the grace of God. Oh, this is the one some people have emphasized and stretched and stretched and stretched. Ah, you are a partaker of the grace of God. And the grace is really powerful. The grace is amazing. You cannot overstretch the grace of God. Praise the name of the Lord. You see this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. That grace justifies you, justifies me, justifies us. The grace justifies you. Hallelujah. So by that grace, God justifies you. Titus chapter 3, verse 7. I wanted to give an illustration on the grace, but our time is really running fast. Um, there was a student uh, in the school where I was. In fact, it was in secondary school. And this student was so gifted, so good, manners, behavior, academic, everything. The teachers loved him up to the principal. The peers respected him. The juniors admired him. It so happened that uh, the school team, he also once in a while entered the school team. The school team had event outside and he didn't know the team, there was no approval. So they called him in and he went with the school team. When he came, they came back, the thing hit the, teach, the games master and hit the principal that they went out to play games without approval. And so they were all to be punished. As the principal was going through the lists, of people that were involved, he saw the name of this boy. He sent for the boy immediately. And he appeared in front of the principal. And he said, tell me what happened. I saw your name on the list of people who went to do games outside without approval. He simply answered and said, sir, I didn't know I was part of the games. The principal said, go and called the games master and said, this, this list ends here. Nobody is suspended. Grace. He had grace upon him. He found grace before the principal and the entire uh, tutors. Just to illustrate what we're talking about here. So, grace. Great grace is upon you. You are a partaker of divine nature. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Praise the name of the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters, all these points I have made are the blessings of God that are already with you. You're right because you are a son, you are a daughter of God. Finally, you are an heir of God and an inheritor of all that God your father has and has provided through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You can see this also in Romans. You can refer to this in Romans chapter 8, verse 17. You are a heir. You are an heir of God. Galatians chapter 4, verse 7, which we read before. So, what then do we do? Brothers and sisters, we want to take action. So there is an assignment for every one of us to take now. Now that you know who you are, I call this project five slash seven. Project five slash seven. Please write it down. Project five slash seven. It means five, pro, five things you are going to do within seven days. And you will keep repeating this throughout this month. Five things within seven days, project five slash seven. So just call it project five, seven, project five, seven. Praise the name of the Lord. So assignment number one, you are going to write down five things outside you and your family that you will pray for a change for the next seven days. Within the next seven days, you're going to pray about it every day for a change. It must be something outside you, outside your family, 
five things. Write down five things you're going to pray about for the next seven days outside you, outside your family. So you can pick a sick person, for instance, uh, and be praying for the sick person, but there is still another action on sickness anyway, which we are going to come to. You can pick a nation. You can pick our country. Remember I told us, if you know who you are, if we, let me put myself there, if we know who we are, we can determine a whole lot of things in the whole world. When early this year at uh, the preparation for the start of 2020, as I often do, seeking the face of the Lord for the new year, the word of the Lord came to me and said, whether people say it is God or is not God, I don't care. I just stay with what God spoke to me because it came precisely and said, I am going to do a thing in this year, 2020, that fear and panic would grip human beings and they will not have a solution to it. That I may glorify my name and prove to all mankind that I, God, I am in charge. And he went further and said, but declare to my people that in this year, I will greatly enlarge my people. I will protect them. I will keep them. And I announced this to those who I could announce to. And so when the event came, I personally was shocked because I had no idea what this was about. So take this seriously. We have to take action. So decide what you're going to affect in the next seven days. Number two, write down five sick persons you should pray for and heal in the next, within the next seven days. Five people you should pray for and heal them. I'm not saying you just pray for them and wish you're going to heal them because remember the works of Jesus Christ. Cast out the devil, heal the sick, raise the dead freely you have received, freely Give Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, and then jump to verses 7 and 8. Number three, write down five souls you should preach and bring to Christ in seven days. And, also, and then number four, write down five dreams or projects you should restore or start. So that project you have abandoned, that dream you have had, which you have given up, this is the month to bring it back. And the Spirit of God is going to come upon you like it came upon David. And he tore the bear and he tore the lion. And he defeat, and defeated and destroyed Goliath. As you put these things down and begin to take action. Number five, which is the last. Write down five bad habits. You must give up. Five bad habits, behavior, attitude, you must give up. It may include uh, sins in your life that has been continuous, continuous. You cry to God and yet you still fall into those sins again. It might just be some bad habits like laziness. Some Christians don't know that laziness is a very dangerous habit that a Christian shouldn't practice. If you're lazy, you cannot wake up to pray when the Holy Spirit prompts you to pray. And meanwhile, Jesus practiced prayer in the early morning every day. So I repeat this number five. Five bad habits you must give up. And five new habits or activities you must learn in seven days. You must learn and put to practice. Oh, you that have been loving, uh, looking for how to lose weight, how to uh, reduce weight, this is the time to do it. So that is it. And we want to pray now. We want to pray as we kick off our fasting and prayer. Remember, we are starting fasting and prayer this week, and it will run uh, from 6 a.m., to 6 p.m. Now, this is the focus of our fasting and prayer. Take the actions that you have already taken now and now add your own specific areas of need. Number one, our focus is 
to seek God and his Holy Spirit that he will manifest in us, the manifestation of God and his spirit. We talk about the fruit of the spirit and the gift of the spirit. It is to seek him for the manifestation. God should manifest in you, manifest in me. Number two, focus is to terminate all forms of evil in your life, family, business and our nation to terminate all forms all forms of evil in your life family business and nation and the last one the focus is to release the kingdom of god and the spirit of god upon your life family and all that concerns you and the land and you and to to release the blessing of god upon yourself So first of all, Isaiah chapter 58 from verse 6 to 13. Isaiah chapter 58 from verse 6 to 13 is what we will study, study and pray according to that. Now, but you yourself take this and look for scriptures. The scriptures that support the blessing. You can open uh, the book that I shared with us. I sent the e-copy to many of us who is a Christian, you find a number of uh, rich scriptures there that speaks about the blessing of God for your life. Use those scriptures as we pray. Now, let us pray. Because our focus this month is help me, O God. The Almighty God will help you in the name of Jesus. Our uh, theme scripture, theme scripture for this month is Psalm 121, Psalm 121. Write that down for yourself and be reading it. I want to pray now. Lift up your voices uh, and say amen as we pray to round off. In the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and thank you for your children. Thank you for reminding us of who we are. Thank you for awakening us to the consciousness of our place, our position in you, almighty God, as sons and daughters of God. Thank you for the rights, the authority, your power that you have vested in us, the dominion you have given to us. Thank you, almighty God. We stand upon this right. We stand upon this authority right now as children of God. And we pray our Father and our God, Pour your spirit upon us and quicken us the more by your spirit. That in this week, these uh, seven days, as we go before you in fasting and prayer, we will not be weary, we will not be tired, but the spirit grace will help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Lord God Almighty, we therefore ask for the manifestation of your gifts, of your power, of your fruit. The, uh, the, the, the righteousness of God in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. We stand and we resist all forms of evil, almighty God, in the name of Jesus. Every form of evil against us individually, evil against our family, against our children, against our brothers and sisters, evil against our nation, we resist it and we terminate it in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, We thank you for the blessing of Abraham is our portion. We therefore ask, oh God, let that blessing be poured upon us. Let that blessing from on high be poured upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we lift up our eyes to you. You are our help, oh God. You are the one that neither sleeps nor slumber. You are the one who watches over us day and night. You never weary. Our God, you are never tired. And so we cry unto you and say, help us, O God, our God. Help us in this month of November. Help us for the remaining days of the year 2020. Help us all the days of our lives. And Father, by your grace, your spirit grace, Let every one of us who have connected here and who is hearing this prayer, Lord God Almighty, fulfill your will and your purpose for our lives 
in this world and at the end of it all, Lord, may we enter into that eternity with you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you.